So the next one um, on dismissal. Again, I thought this was quite an interesting case because this is something that comes up from time to time. If you've got an employee who has always been a fine enough performer um, and always been a decent enough employee and then does something that you think is just grossly negligent, can you dismiss them for gross misconduct? And the reason this comes up is, generally what the law says is, you know, you, you, you ought not to be dismissing someone for performance, excuse me, um, where, it's, where it's a first offence, if you like. You know, you should really go through a performance management process. But what about where you've got some kind of action that's not gross misconduct, so it's not malicious, it's not deliberate, um, but it's caused a huge impact for the organisation and it's a performance issue, but it's gross negligence. Can you dismiss them for gross misconduct? Because it would be difficult to dismiss them for performance. So in this case, this was Sainsbury's HR um, function had organised or, or introduced this new process called the talk back procedure. And it was designed, you know, from an employee engagement point of view to get employees to talk back, to feedback about what they like and dislike about the organisation, etc. Um, there was a manager in one area whose HR business partner um, issued a communication to all of the staff within his area which totally undermined this talkback process. Obviously this HR business partner thought it was a piece of nonsense um, and issued a communication which, which indicated that that was the case. I expect she was dismissed <laughs> for, for gross misconduct. Um, but the manager was then also dismissed for gross misconduct because he didn't do anything to stop the communication and he didn't do anything to kind of go back to the staff and say, look, ignore that email, talk back is very important within this organisation, etc. So he was dismissed for gross misconduct. Now the tribunal found he wasn't dishonest, it wasn't a deliberate decision, and he didn't, you know, he didn't necessarily support what the HR business partner was doing, and, but the impact of him not taking any action was enough to undermine his employer's trust and confidence in his ability and therefore was enough for a gross misconduct dismissal. Now again I think that's quite a surprising decision um, and it's quite an extreme decision so I'm not saying to you that's fine you've got carte blanche now don't worry about it um, but just quite an interesting development in the law because it is a question that can come up in practice from time to time.